Alright, it's about to start recording. What is up, everybody? Welcome to another What is up, everybody? We've got an action packed episode of the PWZ podcast ahead of us today. This is Rick Del Santo, and joining me as always on this Sunday into Monday, Showtime, Marcel Williams. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening, my man? Nothing, my man. Just here chilling in the car now because <laughs> I got my, uh, my place occupied. So now, you know, I'm going mobile in the car. So we're going to uh, do this show in the car on my end. And um, we're still going to let you know what's going on in the wrestling world and all between the local areas of independent wrestling. And Rick Del Santo is going to carry us through the whole week of last week. Yeah, we've got a big week. Uh, MLW talk, Impact talk, uh, AEW and WWE. Um a lot of really big things happen, but first, let's start off with a little bit of the local stuff because it's really what I like to focus on here on the PWZ podcast. As I am a gigantic fan of the Connecticut wrestling in New England in general, mm-hmm. Marcel, you had a chance to work a gigantic show over the weekend, a big show in tribute of our fallen brother, Big Jim Anderson, mm-hmm. uh, at the Shut Up and Wrestle headquarters. Uh, a bunch of wrestling promotions got together that Jim had uh, been friends with and wrestled for. Uh, Paradise Alley, which was his home, Test of Strength, Shut Up and Wrestle, and I believe it was another one or two. Blood, for, Sweat, and Tears. Uh, sweat and tears. Uh, New World Wrestling Extreme. Um, I'll figure out something. It'll probably pop in my head somehow. But we had all seven promotions all under one roof. And uh, it was a big event, a big tribute to Big Jim Anderson. If he was there, he would have been proud because uh, everybody entertained everybody from fans to the talent in the back. We all uh, enjoyed ourselves. Some old and new faces, but it was a nice, uh, it it wasn't a good uh, event to have a good family reunion, but it was a good reunion for a good cause. It looked like it was a stack show. There is some footage up on the Kincaid Files uh, YouTube channel. Um, I'm guessing that more will be uploaded soon. So if you want to go check that out, please go check it out. Um, it's a very nice tribute. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very nice. What else is going on in the world of Marcel before we start hitting the mainstream wrestling? Oh, man. We got a PAPW Elm City Showdown. Uh, we got that uh, this Saturday, which is October 16th, which is a stacked card. We got, uh, obviously, Kylon King versus Matias for a PAPW championship, which was last Saturday. Matias defended PAPW championship at Big Jim Show, which is uh, was one of the first, uh, one of the first, not first, but one of the few that defended the PAPW championship outside of the company. So uh, he's facing Kylon King. And his first ever PAPW championship opportunity. Then you got the Haven defended tag team titles this weekend. You got uh, just announced also today. It was a uh, Dustin Waller Alley Fights Championship celebration. And we got a few new faces like Ryan Mooney versus Shea Cash. And um, more. We got so much more. We got women's action. We got Karen Bam Bam versus Damaris Dawkins. She made a few cameos in ROH. Plus Ryan Mooney as well. He made a few cameos at ROH as well. So we got some ROH heads coming in. Can't forget the bull rope match between Buzz Bloodsaw and Lucas Chase. That match I'm really looking forward to. Uh, yes. First ever bull rope match, truthfully. Yes, in Paradise Alley. I'm looking <laughs> forward to it. I want to see that cowbell and that Dusty road style brutality. From back yeah. In the day. Uh, Legit Perfect Perkins is also appearing, correct? No, still- actually, he uh, no? rescheduled, so basically okay. he will be at uh, Type 1 and None gotcha. uh, Round okay. 3, November round 13th. Three. Uh, also, uh, dude, Steven Garcia against, uh, what's that, Andy Bivens? And- Andy Bivens. Andy Bivens yep. is returning back to PAPW. He's been uh, missing for a while, and uh, he's making his return back to PAPW. And he's facing Steven Garcia. We got a few... Uh, other talents that will be in action. We got the Hoods. We got the Gordon Brothers. We got um, Hispanic Mechanics. Oh, I like and, those guys. Yeah, man. We got is a stack card. And we got uh, your buddy and mine, 
Cody Parent. All right. <laughs> and uh, Bull Dre will be in action. So it's, it's a stacked card this Saturday. I want everybody to come down and watch not only some new faces that debut for PAPW, but some old faces as well. And it's a can't miss show that you don't want to miss. You know, PAPW always pull out some surprises and put on a good show. So I want y'all guys to come on out. 360 Amity Road, Woodbridge, Connecticut, Bell Time. I got to do all that old promo stuff where I got to say all the location and stuff. Bell Time, 7 p.m. Elm City Showdown, Paradise Alley Professional Wrestling. Do not miss it. You can reserve your ticks at paradisealleyprowrestling.com. It's going to be a barn burner. I'm telling you, it's going to be a really <laughs> good show. And every day, you get, actually multiple times a day, it seems you guys have been uh, putting some announcements out there. So it's just a few, a few short days away, six days away. It's going to be a good show. I, I feel it. No, you guys absolutely. never disappoint. Paradise Island never disappoints on their in their live shows. Uh, anything else? Oh, and by the way, by the yeah. way, one more one more PAPW plug. Tickets is always also on sale for Type One and another Round Three. That's also on sale November thirteenth. Same place, same time, JCC, Bell Time, 7 p.m. And All the charity go to the GR, uh, the JRDF uh, um, fund for type 1 diabetes. This is a great venue, too. So anybody that wants to get there, it's a really nice venue in a really nice area. It's just a great place to see a wrestling show. I think this is like mm-hmm. the, what is this, the fourth time you're going to be there, this one coming up? Third or fourth? It is actually the, <laughs> actually, I think it's the third time. Yes, third time because we had we did a tight one and none round two there for the first time, and then uh, then we did a Rumble of Paradise, which was the return, and then this one, Dieselmania five. Uh, before we went on air, you said you were working somewhere else over the weekend, correct? Sunday. No, that's yeah. next Sunday. Actually, I'll be oh, next, next Sunday. Okay. Next Sunday, yeah. Bad, next Sunday, my... it's okay. It's I. Right. It's good. It happens. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be your time. Yeah, second time I'll be at Sanctuary. I will be at Sanctuary this Sunday. That's awesome. I think I saw somebody saw a clip. Uh, I think did did Kylan uh, put a clip up of the last time that you guys were there, uh, jumping, yeah, real, a, drop kicking you off the rope. They, yeah, they, look a, like they uh, film very uh, nicely. Yeah, yeah, their their production is real great. I enjoy it, and uh, you know, great. It's always great to put it on your resume with all the video work that they do. So um, yeah. I'll be back there Sunday to do it again. And right. uh, then we got October 30th. We got uh, Shut Up and Wrestle where I go for the Shut Up and Wrestle championship against Marcos one more time. And then we got the Taco Fest, which I may not be at, but Taco Fest for PAPW, which is which October 23rd, which is in May at One Orchard Beach. And then we got October 30th at uh, Bushnell Park, I think, in Hartford, Connecticut. In Hartford, yeah. From both events, 12 through 6, 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. So it's six hours worth of Paradise Alley professional wrestling. And uh, Paradise Alley teams up with tacos. It's a great combination. Mm-hmm. All right. All the tacos bring- you can eat. And, and margaritas. Exactly. And drink. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a beer guy, personally. But <laughs> I'm trying something new tonight, okay? And get this, I, I, you know, I'm always experimenting with beers. This Three Floyds Zombie Dust IPA, it's really good. How that taste? It's awesome. Do you like IPAs awesome. at all? I heard about IPAs. I really never tried it, but I know certain people don't like IPAs. I really I, don't even know the difference. I gotta do my education on beers. Well, we're gonna have to go for some drinks one night, and I'll educate you. Okay. I'm gonna tell you that IPAs <laughs> are IPAs. If you don't. If you've never drank them, they come off as bitter in the beginning. But I'm going to tell you, it was a professional wrestler that distributed a IPA that I tried their beer. And I actually fell in love with it. Uh, Stone Cold's Broken Skull IPA. Mm -hmm. It's a really good freaking beer. You can ask Sarge about it, too, because he digs it. Um, It just tastes really good. And that's the first IPA that I got that I really enjoyed. So I just started trying others. And... I dig them. Uh, they're 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 just different. You know, there's like different styles of beers between IPAs, stouts. Uh, there's English ales. There's lagers, pilsners. So, well, depends. I'm I'm, a, I'm kind of a I'm down to try it out. Wow, I'm down to try it out. Probably yeah. try it out when we when we reveal the news that we gotta do later on when we do like secret cam- cameos with people. <laughs> well, I'm gonna have to bring a case when uh, 
one day when we record something in person. There's a lot of really good action that happened this week. This is a big week for professional wrestling. You realize this. Every week we say, oh, my God, this is a great big week. It was a huge week. But this week, MLW had two title changes. Well, I mean, yes. the matches were filmed probably a week prior. But they finally aired uh, did, um, on Vice's pack we, past weekend. Excuse me. I'm having trouble getting it out. I think it's the beer. It's um, the beer. <laughs> it is. But I can't do a show without drinking beer. So... <laughs> <laughs> so there was the a four way match. Right <laughs> yeah, the beer, it's, it's <laughs> it. I went to I went to a neighborhood party before the the show, so I had a couple. So, anyways, uh, the middleweight title. I know we talked about it, touched upon it briefly last week, um, but we actually I actually got a chance to see this as a four way match. The Japanese buzz buzz saw Yoshihiro Tajiri <laughs> is the new uh, MLW middleweight champion. Uh, by pinning Myron Reed, current that which was the champion, uh, in a four-way by spraying the green mist and then giving the buzzsaw kick to the head. This was a really freaking good match. It really was yes. a great match. I really enjoyed this match. And <clears throat> while the Japanese buzzsaw does look a little aged, he killed it in that ring. I'm telling you, he really did. Absolutely. And then, obviously, we have a new um, MLW world champion pinning... Uh, Alexander Hammerstone, who did pin Jacob Fatu after a brutal freaking match. Uh, and I think that uh, Hammerstone got a little injured in that match with his knee. I think he uh, he fell outside the ring, injured his knee, had a little trouble getting up and uh, getting in there. But, however, when he went through that table, uh, Jacob Fatu did a moonsault off the top in through a table. And uh, Hammerstone kicked out. I thought it was really going to be over, but then uh, mm-hmm. Hammerstone hulked up and defeated him in a few seconds. And after that, and this was a really freaking good match. And now this makes Hammerstone both the never open weight and the MLW world champion double title holder. I don't know if MLW is going to do something where they're going to have to combine the titles or if they're just going to let them mm-hmm. hold two separate titles. We'll see. Good match, though. Did you enjoy these at all? Yeah, I watched uh, little clips on uh, YouTube from MLW. Their, I don't know if the, that was their debut on Fight TV, like live event wise, but it was. It was a uh, it. It was it. It was, it was Vice. Uh, I think they were they're really po- promoting them on Vice now. So okay. this, I believe, was their was it their first show on Vice or second show on Vice? I know yeah, they recently second came price. back. Yeah. I know they had great numbers for this event, Fightland. So uh, yep. to Jerry, you know, he found a fountain of youth and yes, and won won the championship. And then Hammerstone, he had that freak accent injury, but he overcame it and finished the match. And now he's a brand new MLW champion. And um, you know, MLW is doing big things. You know, doing the Vice thing and doing great numbers on Vice. You know what I'm saying? I think so. That's, um, I think that's amazing for them. Uh, Vice mm-hmm. has been a real good um, home for professional wrestling in a way. Yes. Uh, with, with shows like Dark Side of the Ring, uh, The Wrestlers, that which was a series that aired, I think, a couple years ago that was really good. Mm-hmm. So Vice, and they do random documentaries on wrestling for Vice. So th- there was a really good China documentary that aired, I think, earlier in the year. I'm not sure yes. if you saw that. And that, I really absolutely love that documentary. It's really good. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, Vice, they're doing good things for professional wrestling right now by bringing MLW. I mean, it's just, it's a really good outlet for MLW as well Mm because every cable company has Vice for the most part that I'm I'm aware of. Yes. So, yes, every every company, every uh, streaming company or cable company has Vice and they they show not only the great content of wrestling, they show great content of food yes and drugs <laughs> and everything else that yeah everything else that you need to know about life that is on vice but professional wrestling is on vice and it's a real great thing for uh professional wrestling <laughs> the funny thing about it is you can also <laughs> hear stories about former teenage felons as well so <laughs> yes <laughs> That's a so show. so vice is a great channel to to do all your educational learning on everything including yes. professional wrestling. <laughs> uh, yes, it's it's the real life channel, not like, you know. There we go. 
Yeah, it treats you really <laughs> nice. Let's learn how you want to learn how to cook using reefer. Go yeah, exactly. You know, you know, if you, you want to learn how to cook cocaine, go to Vice. There you go. I, I hate you to say it. I, I we might I get know, banned man. off YouTube. We trying to get these numbers up, and then all of a sudden we get banned for talking about cocaine. <laughs> I, I speak, and by the way, we're all using this in good fun. However, I do want to say that we have gotten over 113 new subscribers as of airtime right now. Uh, yes. Keep subscribing, people. Please keep subscribing. Um, at 500, we're at uh, 360, I believe. Uh, I don't remember the exact number when going to air. Once we hit 500, I'm going to hold a contest, okay? Then we're going to push towards 1,000. Once we hold, hit uh, 1,000, we're going to hold a bigger contest. Keep subscribing, liking, sharing. Try to get all your friends and family to like and share. Anybody that's a fan of interesting wrestling content, so to speak. And not only do we have a podcast on here, several podcasts a week, but we also uh, stream matches. Uh, we film locally. And so it's just a, we're just looking to get hit that thousand mark. And then maybe I think when we do the uh, hit the thousand, what do you say, Marcel? We go live. We'll be able to yeah, go, we'll go live. live, and then we'll go we'll live have... and do whatever you want to do. Yeah, we're going to entertain shows. whatever yes. thousand subscribers. There you go. So, <laughs> and then, like I said, we're going to hold a big contest. I'm going to do something very nice for the fans once we hit a thousand, and it's going to be something nice that any professional wrestling fan is going to enjoy. We just want to hit that number. We're going to be pushing for it. I'm going to be asking you guys to spread the word. Every day until we hit that mark. Obviously, we're, I don't care. But I want to hit more than a thousand. I want to hit more. I want to. How come all these young teenagers get twenty thousand, a hundred thousand? I'm sitting here trying to push my show to the limits. Go figure. Let's hey, do listen, it. My 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 dude Rick be putting out all the content possible, even the content, so y'all can catch up just like we do. So yes. please please share. Um, share, 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 put the word out, and we continue to entertain you as you want us to do. Not only that, uh, like I said, you know, contact Rick, social media, or mine. If any questions that y'all want us to put on the podcast to answer, we're down for. So Absolutely. we want y'all to interact with us, and we're interact with you. That's right. And once we hit 500, there is going to be a contest. So look for it, and I'm going to do a video right here announcing it. So back to the show. <laughs> Impact held the Knockouts Knockdown uh, tournament, which I thought was a really great tournament. Uh, you know, um, Mercedes Martinez won the tournament. Um, she gets a, f a future title shot against current champion. Well, as of present time, is current champion Diana Perazzo. Um, God knows what's going to happen. I guess Bound for Glories in a couple weeks. Um, Impact is a tough show to watch sometimes, but they did this was an Impact Plus special, so it was pretty entertaining. Uh, they seem to be really struggling since um, coming back from COVID. Yeah, man. I mean, Impact Wrestling, you know, it, it's been a it's been a long uh, process with uh, Impact Wrestling. A lot of changes, name changes, uh, stars going in and out. Um, basically, you know, they had a rebuilding stage still, um, bringing in, I mean, it's good that all the stars is not going to AEW, you know, now yep. they just made the announcement inspiration formerly known as the uh, Iconics that's coming mm -hmm. in for Battle for Glory. And, you know, it's just, uh, it's just good for the wrestling business for not everybody to go to two promotions. Now that you go, you go to three, you could go ROH and make it better. You know what I'm saying? So, um. It's just a great thing for professional wrestling and impact wrestling. Hopefully they rebuild off the names that they're trying to accumulate along with all the releases that was happening within the year. I think one of the last times we spoke, we had the show. It's like, there's been about, there's about five or six main, uh, bigger wrestling companies. I don't want to say mainstream, but not everybody's mainstream, but there's about five, six larger wrestling companies in the United States with obviously the biggest two being AEW and WWE Impact's not far behind, and MLW and Ring of Honor and the NWA are kind of, they don't get enough attention, but obviously we're saying how much MLW is getting, seems to be getting a lot of attention, uh, maybe more Absolutely. than I'm actually, maybe more than I'm actually understanding, 
Um, but you know, maybe they're getting a little bit more than Ring of Honor or NWA. I, I'm not sure how much. <clears throat> I'm not sure exactly what the NWA's numbers are. I'm not sure. But I'd really be interested in knowing what kind of numbers they get on uh, on fight. So because mm-hmm. you know, I know I'm watching every Tuesday. I just don't know who else is watching. So exactly. Other than, other than like three other people that I know of. So mm-hmm. <laughs> that I know for sure, but it's a, a product I enjoy. But there's a lot of places for wrestlers, say, if they're getting let go from the E, that they can go. There's another, mm-hmm. you know, a bunch of, and no, not for nothing, there's another organization across the pond uh, in um, New Japan. You know what I mean? Exactly. Which they, they don't take everybody, but, you know, I'm, I think they're pretty selective with the American talent they take, but that's also an option. You know what I mean? Exactly, and then now that you have Mercedes Martinez win the whole tournament for the knockout, um, knockdown event, and look, she just got released. I feel like yes. she was a pickup for any promotion, and she, she came well, there and she won the whole thing. She's really like they really built her up through this entire entire tournament. Now I watched, I missed the first hour, but you know I tuned in. Um, they really built her up throughout the entire tournament, referring to her as like this gigantic legend, which I'm not saying she isn't. She absolutely is. But mm-hmm. it's the amount of respect and legendary status that she was getting on this impact taping or show was amazing. Like I didn't really yeah. view like, I just know her from a, as a lady from Waterbury, Connecticut. I've seen her on shows around here for decades. Mm-hmm. And, you know, yeah, she made it to the E finally. And the amount of respect. I mean, I always knew that she had a name out there. You know what I mean? That yeah. she was kind of a kind of a bigger woman's wrestler. But it's just amazing that the amount of respect that they were sh- throwing at her in Impact last night. It was it was uh, really really cool to see. You know? Uh, yeah, actually, you know, like she's a easy call us journeyman, but she's a journey lady, and right. she's been around. <laughs> she's yeah. been around. WWE may have said some of it where she was. She's been around. I know they did it for the May Young Classic when she did it. Besides mm-hmm. that, um, you know, we all know she's been around and mm-hmm. she has experience and she's been at AEW. AEW had her for once for a cup of coffee, but you know, uh, I'm just glad that she's getting the notoriety that she deserves because she's been she around. Absolutely. She has done the work. Absolutely, so, mm-hmm. and. I literally like she popped up in AEW. I'm like, oh, like on a, I think it was like a dark taping or something to that effect. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. Maybe she's gonna sign here. And then like a week later, that's when she showed up in NXT or they announced exactly in NXT. I was like, huh. I was like, well, congratulations to her because she's it's well deserved. You know what I mean? Yes. So because she's been around for a long time, she's an amazing talent. But then, however many what like less a year later, less than a year. I don't know how long she was actually under contract, but you know. Uh, then she got released in this earlier in this year. I was kind of upset about that because, you know, you always like to see when your local talent makes good and gets signed. You're like, man, I saw them on indie shows here. It's going to be awesome to see them on my TV every week. You know what I mean? Especially mm-hmm. if they're the amazing talent that she is. You know, So yeah, I've been a fan of hers since I think the first time I saw her was like 2002 working a Sheldon Goldberg show. I don't know if you remember him at all working. I know Sheldon Goldberg, yeah. Yeah, so that was the first NECW. time. I was like, yes, exactly. They booked some shows here in Hamden, Connecticut, and I was like, "Wow, she's really good." And that's the first time I actually saw uh, Antonio Thomas, who ended up signing with WWE at some point uh, shortly after, as a yep. him and Romeo Roselli. The <laughs> so heartthrobs. Yes, exactly. So he used to, he apparently he had a knack for future WWE talent as well. So yes, <laughs> so. Yeah, but this uh, Knockouts Knockdown tournament was really, really good. And, uh, you know, I, I dug it big oh. time. Also, uh, more news. Women's Wrestling making a return with AJ Lee. Yes, that's right. Behind the curtain. And plus, the big controversy of it all, Tessa Blanchard is going to be one of the people behind the scenes as well. Well, she signed. they both signed with WOW. Uh, Women yes. of Wrestling. uh so apparently there was a press conference over the weekend. I tried to find the press conference because a lot of time they stream this stuff. And I was una- unable to find it, but I found a couple of articles. Uh, a lot of people are not happy about Tessa Blanchard. Uh, no. She's been a controversial figure over the last couple of years uh, since leaving Impact. Uh, for some 
weird stuff, I guess, and some racial talk that she's uh, racial talk, uh, degrading yeah. women backstage, yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, and for someone that's been in the business as long as she has, she really doesn't have much to speak about because she's on, it's only been a short time. I mean, but she did mess up too after all that. She did mess up where she didn't drop the Impact Championship. She basically just left them high and dry. Yeah. Hmm. Yes. It's interesting. It's very interesting. <laughs> it's like, what is that is true. She just went home with the title, and then uh, yeah. she just never came back. Um. Did they get a new belt, or did they ma- she end up mailing it to him overall? I don't I think remember. She ended up mailing it to him, but you know that's yeah. not how you do business. No, she was very selfish. I think a lot of it comes into her father's a freaking legend, so maybe she thinks some things should be handed to her. But either way, doesn't matter. Or she just thinks you know she's a diva. But the biggest news really is AJ Lee getting back involved in wrestling. Let's be serious. Yes, that is the biggest story. I mean, her husband got back involved after seven years. Guess what? It's kind of big news that she's getting back involved as well. So, but know, it will not be in a wrestling role. It'll be behind the scenes. No, so she's going to be get back into wrestling. She's going to be behind the scenes, and she's going to be a television commentator for uh, women in wrestling as well. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be interesting. Congratulations to her. I'm not, you know. Aside from all the bullshit that happened with Tessa, I think she is a really good talent. It's mm-hmm. that pers- personal stuff that I'm not, you know, really a fan of. So um, maybe she can clean up her act and start acting like a normal human being. Absolutely. So, you know, at least keep it to yourself if you're going to, you know, be like that. Because nobody else wants to hear that shit. We live in a different world where nobody wants to hear shit like that anymore. Exactly. So, but we so, already know in the world of wrestling, you always could bounce back. Well, that's de- that, that's debatable. I think. I mean, look it at Joey. It is debatable, Ryan. but but you look know, at Joey we, Ryan, we, and he, he hasn't been around for almost two years now. So yeah, but look at Hogan. Oh, there's yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. He's, uh, <laughs> you're absolutely right. <laughs> Excuse me. So I got some WWE news made. Well, you know, AEW results and Smack uh, WWE results. Something that we mentioned. Last week uh, is going to be brought up again this week, okay? Mm-hmm. For once we hit AEW talk, because I kind of find it somewhat ironic, but let's get to Raw, okay? Yes. I'm not going to go over the draft. I'm going to go over the results real quick, and then um, I'm going to combine the draft talk, because I, I have the list of everybody that's been drafted to each uh, show. All okay. right, so uh, this match I thought was pretty decent, considering... First match on Raw, Damian Priest defeated Jeff Hardy. It was the United States title match. This is a pretty decent match. Uh, Jeff Hardy is uh, is Jeff Hardy. You know, Damian Priest. Is, <laughs> I mean, I think we've discussed this before. He's been there, he's he's there, and he has a certain role at this age. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So he's not, and also he's uh, lightened up a little bit, I guess, in the way so he's he's there to do his role. So to speak. Yes. Damien Priest is one of the biggest stars in the future. And I think that he's going to be humongous in the next year. I think this was Absolutely. a pretty, pretty decent match. Yeah, I enjoyed the match. I watched uh, most of it to set up to the next segment that we probably talked about in a minute. But Jeff Hardy still got the fountain of youth in. But he's doing his deed while he move on to SmackDown for another run, hopefully. I'm not expecting him to have a good run, but at least a better run that he had in Raw. He's going to have the veteran run, I think, you know, at this point. And this might be his last term through uh, WWE, his last run in WWE, I should speak, say. Absolutely. It seems like, you know, because he might either uh, flip the boat or something or, or, or just retire. The guy's pretty banged up, though. I'm surprised he's actually gone as long as he is because... I mean, some of that stuff he's done over the last couple of decades, he really could have gotten himself messed up. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, uh, which was the next segment, if you... The next segment was when uh, Austin Theory made his... uh, He made his Raw debut a year ago, but he came back as a a guy that looked up to Jeff Hardy, and he actually turned on him and Mm -hmm. took selfies while he took him down. So he did his little uh, debut return 
on Monday Night Raw before he's uh, full time on the main roster. Did you see the uh, selfies posted on Instagram by Austin Theory? Yes, I did. Great photos by Austin Theory. Hilarious, <laughs> by the way. The <laughs> funny part about it is Austin Theory came out and the announcers even. It's like he had never been part of Raw. Well, thought, there's a lot of things that we can talk about that they talk about that, uh, you know, like uh, Charlotte Flair never, uh, Charlotte Flair and Bianca Belair never wrestling before when they wrestled NXT last year or the year before. It's so, yeah, w- it's like- WWE, uh, WWE mentality, basically, which I just mm. I thought that was comedy. I thought it was comical to me. I was like, they were acting and even Austin Theory was acting like he'd never been there before. He was in the exactly. He was a very important part of the empty arena stage when he was teamed up with uh, uh, Angel Garza and uh, was it Andrade or no? No, it was Angel. Yeah, well, he, Angel yeah, Garza. he was part of that. But then he was with Angel Garza for the WrestleMania that was in the Performance Center. So mm-hmm. he made a WrestleMania appearance. So it's, it's just funny that they didn't know who he was. That's like Braun Strowman come on TV. They don't know who he is. Yeah. yeah, Hulk Hogan could come out, but who the hell is this old guy? You know, that kind of a exactly. thing. It's like, it's WWE mentality. What has he done? Really? <laughs> uh, I, I love the segment, though, where he came out, where he came out and, and wanted to take selfies with Hardy. And once he was just like, um, you know, oh, let me get a picture with you. I'm like, he's just going to beat the crap out of him. I mean, it was just too exactly. obvious. You know what I mean? I was like, I was like, WWE has this thing. They don't like surprises. Okay, they don't like actually surprising the people. If they walked off together, that would have been pretty cool. And then have them turn on them later on in the show or something weird to that effect. You know what I mean? Don't make it so exactly. obvious. But I got something really important I want to bring up uh, after the main event. Or remind me. So, uh, not to mention the second match was Shayna Baszler and, let's see this, uh, Dana Brooke. She won by submission. She went to to break her arm on the uh, thing, and that lady came out to there, save her. Uh, Dewdrop. There you go, Dewdrop. I keep forgetting <laughs> her name. Um, and they basically just had a stare down, and as she left. I just, uh, wait, wait! Before you even say that, I just want to say the most funniest thing that Corey Graves ever said that nobody ever caught. So when Dewdrop came down there to save Data Brooke, she skipped out there. And Corey Grace is like, if you're going to save somebody, why are you skipping? You will be running. Right. <laughs> yeah, I, I did hear him say that. I should have put that in the notes. But yeah, right. I was like, why are you skipping? Uh, Corey Grace, I don't normally agree with and find him annoying, but I was like, you know, he's fucking right. That's what I said. Yeah. When I, brought that. I want somebody to save me, and I don't want them skipping. Yeah, and they're walking around all, you know, the whole time. It's like, get the hell out of here with that. So yeah. The, so I'm guessing that they're going to set up with uh, Dewdrop and Shayna Baszler. Um, I, I like the way they're building Shayna Baszler. They're building her up like NXT built her up. So they're setting her up for SmackDown, which is good. Um, you know, Shayna yeah. Baszler should be treated as a serious deal. She's a real deal. Mm-hmm. And I'm just glad that they take her seriously, finally. Well, she got stuck in a, I wouldn't say comedic uh, gimmick, but a somewhat less threatening gimmick teaming with uh, Nia Jackson and Reginald. Yes. Even though she tried to be the more serious one of the bunch, especially on social media, you see Reginald and Nia Jax doing like TikTok videos and then Shayna Baszler would try to be the serious one in the video. But it really was just more like she couldn't, even though she was trying. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it just like, it was kind of taking the threatening part away from her character. But I think Shayna Baszler... Um, she's a beast, man. She's crazy. Yes. Like, I think that she's going to be an amazing talent for SmackDown. Now that they're actually going to give her a singles run on the main roster, I'm looking forward to that. I think it's going to be good. Yeah, I just hope she get her WrestleMania match that she's supposed to have. Well, she had a WrestleMania match last year, but I just hope she get her singles WrestleMania uh, run yeah. match for, with crowd involved. You know, she didn't get to have that with Becky Lynch. Right. Oh, this, the last two years have been so uh, insane between the uh, COVID and then um, all the weird stuff that's been happening on. You know what I mean? We can't mm. necessarily put 
uh, live events on and then next thing you know there's no there is live people so th- it's just very interesting the way things have been going in the last couple of years wwe i don't think knows what the fuck they're doing half the time to be honest <laughs> but they change it at flip of they the playing by air yeah pretty much pretty much uh this next match i thought was pretty decent match uh so umberto uh who's an amazing talent and angel garza defeated mustafa and mansoor not much yeah it was, really. you know it was, it was a good match all. they just didn't have no time yeah. yeah that's the other thing is like these guys are all four of these guys it's amazing that you could put four amazing talents in the ring like this put them in there for three or four minutes if that sometimes but then they give and they'll give braun Strowman 30 minutes or whatever there not that go. he's even in there but you get what i'm saying it's like these guys mm-hmm. i bet you if they put these guys in there give them 15 minutes they'd probably tear the house down and the fans would actually be cheering but they don't like WWE doesn't seem to like when the fans cheer at their stuff. They like it when they're sitting on their hands. Exactly. That's WWE. Yeah. They they, <laughs> they see something. They see something and they were like, that's what I want to push. But even though the fans might get excited over a match like this if they were having like a crazy match. Uh Big E and Drew defeated Dolph and Robert Rude. Yeah, this was a whatever match. You know, yeah. I like I like the guys in this match. I like them all, but it's like it's just a regular yeah. TV match. All great uh, performers. Yeah, I think Robert Root is. You know, uh, how do I say this? Like in WWE, he's underrated right now. Yes, I think he's like I don't want to because I think that his WWE. A lot of people I've spoken to a lot of people are. Oh, I don't like his WWE run. I I didn't like him when he was in NXT. I don't like him on the main roster. I'm like this is really good stuff he's doing because he's actually saving the segments. To be honest with you, he's saving the stuff between him and Dolph. I'm not a huge Dolph guy. I kind of find him annoying at times, but I guess that's kind of like the purpose of him playing as a heel. But Robert Roode is really probably the star of that in a way. You know, in yes. those segments, because I think he's, he's an amazing talent. He's an underrated talent, I think, in in, uh, in WWE. I, I think people are, he had a really great run in TNA and Impact, so people aren't really giving the WWE as much of a chance. He was a huge star in the other company. But exactly, he's just a regular mid card guy here. I like it though. I like him here. Let's see what else we got here. Rhea Ripley and hold on, sorry. yeah, Rhea Ripley and Nikki, almost a superhero. If you had Tamina and Natalia for the or this was the women's tag team championship match. Uh, not really much else to say about it. I mean, not it's really just another story. rematch, yeah, and it's not really like I'm another not really. Rematch. I'm not dying to see Natalia or Tamina in the ring. They really don't do much. Uh, I like Natalia, yeah. but she just, uh, they just, just like, uh, she's a pr- preliminary wrestler, like a jobber, and so yes. to speak. You know what I mean? And then she very rarely uh, wins, uh, has a victory. Really, they really, give I her a little bit of run. They give yeah. her a little bit of run every once in a while. And she, I guess she's a good hand because every so often she'll, they'll, they'll, Bring her up for something, you know what I mean? She actually held, the, she was the first match in Saudi Arabia, you know what I mean? Yeah. The, the first woman's match, so they used her. I think she actually won that, didn't she? Am I wrong? Yes, she did. Okay, so that was she probably beat, the first uh, match. I, Evans. Right, that was the first match I ever, I think I've seen of her, her win in a long time, too, at that, at that point. Uh, Kofi and Xavier defeated Shelton and Cedric Alexander. I like Shelton and Cedric. <laughs> I'm yeah, glad you know, I mean, I'm glad they're using them yeah. now because, you know, they broke yeah. up the Hurt business. Now they put them back together like it never yeah. happened. But <laughs> once again, that's WWE for you. Yeah. So it's like, you know, but I mean, I it's not that I don't like Kofi and Xavier. It's just they push him down your throat for like a good five, six years now at this point. And it's just one of those things like it's like take a break. Get off my TV for yeah. six months and let me forget about you and then come back. Maybe they should turn him heel for Christ's sake. So, I mean, that, but they're too over with the fans. So, too over and they sell too much merch. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I got a new merch day. matters. I got a new day tote bag that I got for free. You want it? Speaking of which, no, I guess not. Nah, um, you got the shirt. <laughs> I got the shirt, the shirt cereal box. It's not oh. cereal in it. It was a shirt that came with the cereal box. Like the shirt was in the box. So nah. Right. Did you actually buy that? 
I think I did. Yeah, I brought it just as a souvenir because cool. I went to WrestleMania. Uh, which which WrestleMania did you go to? The one in uh, uh, New Jersey? Uh, I, got, I, I got that one from... I got, that, I got that one from the Orlando one. The, uh, oh, okay. I done forgot my numbers after fucking 31, dude. Like, no, since, I get what you're saying. It, since Vince don't want to add numbers to it, I done forgot <laughs> after 31. I had to look it up when I went. I went to 35. The, the one where Daniel Bryan, Bryan Danielson, and Kofi wrestled. That's the one that I went to. That was WrestleMania 35. Okay. Only that I knew that was 35 because uh, that was in New Jersey, which it should have been in Madison Square Garden, but they go to stadiums now. So, yeah, that was WrestleMania 35. Well, I'm going to tell you this. It was a fucking nine hour show between the, the pre shows that they had and the actual main of, main show. It was basically a well, four hour show. I actually know that because I was there too. I, I kind of thought I was working for a minute. Dude, I thought I was going to die. I literally fell asleep <laughs> halfway through the show, and, and so you were there too. So, did you I'm notice there. how? Did you notice how actually, like, you know, it's really hot during the day, and once you got into the building, it was freezing. Did yes, you notice I was like, yeah. and I only had like a like a like a light jacket because I was like, when I got up to get in the car, I was like, oh man, it's really hot. So forget it. Listen, dude, I was, dude, dying I was well prepared. Area. Yeah, I was well prepared because I learned my lesson from um, – I went to Atlanta one in 27. So when I went to Miami, the WrestleMania 28 for Rock and Cena, um, I went there. It was hot in the day, and then when soon as it, the sun went down, it was freezing. So every time now I go to WrestleMania with this outdoor show, I bring a jacket because uh, is, you got to remember, it's still kind of wintertime in the spring. So yep. you got to get ready for that that nighttime air and it's freezing. So now I know for next time if I go, if I ever go to a stadium to bring a coat with me, like mm-hmm. a winter coat and that long. But I'm sitting there. People are in shorts and T-shirts and just chilling with nothing. I should have bought a hoodie that night or something to that effect. <laughs> I went to the store, dude. I ended up buying the, uh, well, the I only had one shirt in mind when I went mm-hmm. there. I want to buy the Kurt Angle retirement shirt. That was the only thing I, I wanted that entire evening. I said I knew there was going to be a special commemorative shirt just because that was supposed to be his retirement. I got it. Mm. And I have it somewhere. I just got to dig through, you know, whatever. It's just, you I know, know every WrestleMania, yeah, every WrestleMania, I was buy my son a, uh, my son a WrestleMania jacket uh, for oh, each really? year. And uh, yeah, yeah, I brought him one for Atlanta. I think WrestleMania 28, I brought him one. And then um, WrestleMania, I get all my WrestleManias together. I've been to so many of them. Like, really? I took breaks in between, too. Yeah, I took breaks in between. I was like, yeah, I ain't going to this one this year. But uh, I went to two in my life. Two? So, yeah. I went to yeah. 11 when it was in Hartford. Did you go to that? Were you in Connecticut then? Hell no. Yeah, I was in Connecticut, but I wasn't even be able to go to shows at that age. But. WrestleMania oh, 11. I'm glad I didn't go to that. That was boring. Bro, let me tell God you. God bless you. That, shit, that shit's not that bad. I tried watching Listen, it. I mean, WrestleMania seen... 11 is the worst. They keep on saying WrestleMania 9 was the worst. WrestleMania. No, WrestleMania 11 was the worst WrestleMania. WrestleMania yeah, 9, I enjoyed it for the it being in Las Vegas. Brett and Yokozuna match was real good. And Shawn Michaels' Tonka match was good. There was only one match but that was good that on WrestleMania 11. Don't you got the Samoans and the and and uh, the Steiners and on the Steiner, bro? That was a good match too. That's, yes. There's no way because those guys wrestled NWA two years prior, or three or four years prior. You know what I mean? Yeah. So those guys and they put on some really good matches. So yeah, they're gonna fucking put on a good match at WrestleMania. Like, like you had you had so many good matches on that card, and then people say WrestleMania Nine was the worst one. No, WrestleMania Eleven was the worst WrestleMania ever. It was only one good match. It was Michaels and Diesel. That was it. The whole card, I guess I just applaud Lawrence Taylor for doing what he was doing. But WrestleMania 11 right. was a one match show. I'm going back to watch both of them this week. I'm going to. And I'm going to get back to you. <laughs> please <laughs> please God, you, though. I mean, I've never gone back to watch WrestleMania 9. I've gone back to watch WrestleMania 11 because I was there. I've never made it through like the third or fourth match. Like by that time, I usually shut it off. <laughs> like, so yeah, 
like before before WrestleMania 17 and 19, before those WrestleMania's was like came out and they was like the best WrestleMania ever. The best WrestleMania ever before that was to me WrestleMania 8. WrestleMania 8 was a, the best WrestleMania. I'm gonna have to look back at some of these. I'm gonna have to go back because and, I'm such uh, a WrestleMania fan. So if you so if you talk to me about WrestleMania, I know everything about WrestleMania. So coming up though. Every so far with this podcast, every year this is going on. The we've reached second the, the second year next mm. month. Both years, the first years, the WrestleMania we usually do retro reviews before uh, we cover the actual main event of the 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 actual WrestleMania. So we're gonna have to look back. Usually, you put some in a hat, and then we choose out which ones the uh, which ones. So we're gonna have to do that. Are you interested in doing that next spring? Let's do it. I'm interested I'm, in doing it. Long, long as WrestleMania 2, 11. Wait, hold on. 2, 11. WrestleMania 4 was good. Um, WrestleMania 4, I think, is a terribly underrated. A lot of people hate it because it's a tournament. Yeah. I exactly. like that one. I But I'm a sucker for tournaments, though, too, involved in professional wrestling. But I think that that's why a lot of people think that that's a terrible show. Yeah, yeah, but WrestleMania four was good. I, I enjoy WrestleMania four. I like like WrestleMania two. I didn't like WrestleMania two. I didn't like WrestleMania eleven. Um, WrestleMania thirteen was all right, but that was a one match show too. That was just Austin and Ho- and uh, Bret Hart. So yeah, but like, it seems like, like once they know. started hitting like the later numbers, like you know, like you said, the later teens. That's when they started building them. They added an extra hour, went from three to four hours, and they started building them like they were the biggest show on earth. Yeah. That's pretty fucking awesome, dude. I mean, they, they, yeah. We got way off topic, by the way. Yes, we did. I, we still, I, I know the fans probably hate us doing that. It. It's all right, PT. I don't really give a crap. <laughs> I like professional wrestling, but, um, you know, it's just, it's something that's regular here, getting off topic, and uh, I like it. I don't care. Um, because it brings up memories, great memories that I have about professional wrestling. But we got one more match to talk about from Monday Night Raw. I have a very important part to bring up that I, I, I heard um, on a, a pod, another podcast last week. Bianca Belair basically defeated Charlotte with a DQ. I don't know if that was actually a DQ or if it was actually a non-finish. Um, they it, did a non-finish last week for SmackDown with uh, not not this one, but the week before with the same... You know, Belair versus uh, Sasha. It was no contest. So I was listening to Wade Keller's podcast, uh, mm-hmm. the Pro Wrestling Torch. They did a review. They were reviewing AEW or something to that effect. And basically, I just remember the point. Now, I posted a clip on my TikTok, too. It was them, and I think Greg Sparks were discussing the... Um, the amount of non finishes in WWE in a year and the amount in all time in AEW. It's the amount all time in the last two years of AEW. So now, mind you, I believe this is counting starting 2019 is when they started their television show because mm-hmm. they were building up for the second in this two year anniversary this past Wednesday. The amount was two. Two. Two years. And in the last year, WWE was in the triple digits. It's insane. It's I'm going to tell you the exact same thing that Wade Keller said. It's insane. It's yes. nuts. That's um, that's that's ridiculous. The amount of non finishes. But what do they do? Like, I remember when I was a kid, WWE used to do that stuff on TV. They would always have like, mind you, it's a superstars or challenge used to always have like job matches and there was always mm-hmm. the ones that won but then you'd get the treat at the end every so often where it'd be two of the superstars wrestling and always end in a disqualification or a count out anytime mm-hmm. the two superstars very rarely would there ever be a pin so it always end up in a non-finish what is wwe's obsession with non-finishes is this, back then i could see they're all oh, they're building up towards house shows today there's no house shows there's Monday Night Raw, there's Friday Night SmackDown. There's a pay per view once a month. Well, not even do can we call them pay per views anymore? I mean, they just stream. Nah, they just stream on Peacock now. Um, streaming events. To answer your question, it, it just got stuff to do a certain time with egos. Like some people just don't want to 
make the ending simple and just beat that person. It's okay to lose. It's okay. It's not gonna hurt anybody. So, I mean, if they would have Bianca losing, it would have been fine. It wouldn't have hurt her. You, she's facing Charlotte, who's a champion. You know what I'm saying? So, and not only that, the championship wasn't even on the line. And they don't have no problem. They don't have no problem any time, any other time, sitting here beating champions in non-title matches. So I didn't know what the difference here was, especially after he done did the same thing the uh, be- Friday before with Sasha and Bianca. Right. So it's 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 starting to be a situation where I, I call it a nitro effect because while I started reliving all the nitros, the main event was always a non-finish. You always had the NWO going in there, and it was never a finish because of certain egos. It's, right. it's okay to lose. It's rare that you should do a no contest or a no disqualification. It's real rare that you should do that if you're setting up for something. But besides that, right. like, it's just, yeah, listen, that's, that is insane. Triple digits, triple digits of no finishers. Yeah, that's insane. It's pure chaos. It's purely chaotic. It's ridiculous. Like, do the fans enjoy this? Like, the, like I mean, I get it. Like, the wrestling fans, there's wrestling fans, there's WWE fans. There's there's a complete difference. But like, do they think think, think that's normal? Like, really? In professional, I don't wrestling? think they reckon. I I I don't think they recognize it. Like back in the day, because I mean, people thought that on Nitro they were throwing trash in the ring because it was heat. No, they were throwing trash in the ring because it was a no contest every Nitro. So, wants to see this crap. Um, yeah, exactly. So it's just, you know, you just got to understand that uh, the fans, a uh, fan like a kid or something like that, they don't get it. But people like me or you or certain workers or maybe even the people that have been watching WWE or pro wrestling for years, they get it. And then they'll get tired of it. And then that'll push people away from your product. Absolutely. And do you think that? Now, a lot of people are giving up on WWE these days. This, you think this has something to do with it? Other than like just crappy booking on top of it? I mean, besides the, the, the insane booking, the insane booking and, you know, the no contests and, you know, continuously rematches when you got a, a solid roster already, but the continuous rematches every Monday and Friday, that takes a toll on your product, you know, and, um, all I can say is, is just you got to refresh your product and you can't just be doing it because, you know, you have Monday night football season or just because AEW beat you in the 18 to 49 demographic. You got to make sure that you refresh this product because now you got competition. You may not want to set the fact that you have competition. You should have competition now. So you got to refresh your whole content that you put out. And, you know, to draft, I feel like was a waste of time because you don't release like you no know, about everybody and you only got a small amount of people that's on the roster wasn't well, there something like if you combine the last two releases probably something like 60 some people if not more released 60 or more yeah 60 or more that and was, that all, was a, that's a brand by itself and this is all amazing talent that could have been brought up and used uh, uh, tremendously now mind you it could have like, been used for the matches so you don't make a rematch so Instead of me seeing Matt Riddle versus AJ Styles, there's nothing wrong with seeing that because they put on a great match. That's fine. Right. But at the end of the day, you think I want to see that five times every time, every week? It starts to get old. You know what I'm saying? So you could have used one of those guys to face AJ Styles or face an Omos. Yeah. I mean, we could have seen anybody. The thing with that is, like, does Raw itself have 60 people on the roster probably not no not anywhere near does smackdown no but they keep using the same probably there we go maybe two dozen people if that at the most yes. it do yes. they even use a dozen people that's the other question over mm-hmm. and over it's these same faces every single week and it's kind of it's kind of irritating because they could like they have a lot of guys signed and i mean they've been wiping it clear lately I don't even know who signed that they're not using anymore. Last time, you know, EC3 was there. People were complaining that EC3 is not on TV, but, you know, he was there for like a year or two years, and he was never used one bit. Never, ever. I think once in a while he'd be on the main event, but who the hell is watching that? It's on Hulu. How many people are going, jumping over? Oh, i got to watch the main event and tune on to Hulu. You know what I mean? Exactly. 
I don't, you know, I don't ever like unless there's something I know. I mean, where the hell is Ricochet these days? Like they're barely using him. He's probably well, Ricochet. There. They use they used him for last week against Reggie, which I heard a lot of people was really interested in seeing that match, and they only gave him two minutes. That's what I'm talking about. That continuously happens. If this was you no, know, you know, I don't want to be one of those guys. It's just, I'm saying if they were that was AEW. We'll probably give him a good ten to fifteen minutes on TV. Ten to fifteen minutes, eight to ten or something. Like you don't yeah. sit here and just get them two minutes of two people that got the same type of style, and then you give them two minutes. Yeah, because it's just going to end up. It's just going to be ridiculous. It's not going to be interesting mm-hmm. whatsoever. I don't know what's going on in that land. Like that, it's just very confusing to me. Hey, uh, it's, all I gotta say is they making off. money. They making money and don't care. They're making more money right now with all their deals and all this other stuff, cable deals, streaming deals, uh, international deals. So, you know, apparently doing something right, but um, a lot of fans are getting turned off. And I'm not, I mean, if it wasn't for this podcast, honestly, I probably would not be paying that close attention. But I respect it. I'm but saying, I, I mean, but I mean, you know, I've been watching WWE since 1984. It's not like I'm really going to stop that much. A lot of times I've ended up fast, fast forwarding. To the stations. I mean, it might. It's not the same WWF, WWE that I started watching in 1984. It's far different, you know. Exactly. So on to SmackDown, uh, the King of the King of the Ring and the Queen's Crown. Uh, yes. Tournaments started basically simultaneously. Um, are they doing this just on SmackDown? Or is it going to be a Raw and SmackDown? That part I'm, I'm is on is on Raw and SmackDown. And the final is going to take place at Crown Jewel on October twenty first. That should be interesting, now, shouldn't it? Mm-hmm. Well, we already got the shocker that people is not happy about where uh, Zelina Vega defeated Tony Storm. Yeah, I see that here, uh, Tony Storm. Uh, she to me, she would have been the. Uh, the one to take it, you know what I mean? I mean, she's a talent. You would think. You would think, you know. I mean, because she killed it in NXT UK, and then she just, you know, they used her in NXT the prior to the 2.0 era, and she they did a lot of really great work to her. And I mean, roster, it's, uh, you know, but that's every great talent that's come from NXT. Uh, doing Absolutely, that stuff. it's unfortunate. It is because you know there's a, it's happened to a lot of people, unfortunately. Uh, so Sami Zayn defeated Rey Mysterio. This is something that I'm kind of excited for. I'm telling you, um, because Dominic. Are you going to do your rant about the finish? No, I actually like the finish. Okay, I was <laughs> I've been hearing some stuff about the finish, and I seen the finish, and I was like, uh, I liked it. The finish, it could work. It no, nah, I liked it. I'm gonna, be, but I will rant about one thing, and it's not gonna be anything major or uh, crazy. Uh, basically, you know, they had the pre-match promo with uh, Myster- the both Mysterios, and then uh, he had uh, Big Daddy Mysterio Ray asked uh, Dominic to stay behind. Of course, they do the intro. They, they the camera focuses on the arena with Ray Mysterio entering. Then they go backstage, and Sami Zayn is, uh, he's, uh, what's he doing? He's kind of trying to turn uh, Dominic in a way, which I thought this was yes. great, because I, I thought that I was like, oh, man, I love Sami Zayn as a heel. I think he's great. Um, yes. He's, he is funny, but he's just really good at what he does. You know what I mean? Absolutely. It, it whether he's being on the comedic side or whether he's being on this the serious side of being a heel, you know what I mean? He like it's mm-hmm. like he's he's like the best of both worlds, and he combines them two perfectly together as a heel. So it was, you know, he took the turnbuckle off, and uh, Dominic wasn't going to let that happen. So he tried to put the turnbuckle on, and then Ray got distracted, and then Sami Zayn won the match, and then the two kind of argued at the end. I literally thought that's when Dominic was going to turn heel. I was yeah. hoping, I was hoping for it at least. Uh, so I really want to see that happen. And I, obviously, they're building towards it. Whether they actually pull the trigger and deliver, that's you know, it's WWE. They could tease that for three months and then just have it turn into a different direction. But it looks absolutely, it looks like that's the direction that they're going to go in. And I'm all for it because it's something that's like to me. 
that's interesting t- television to see uh, the mm-hmm. kid tar- turn on the father, even though the father's trying to guide him in the proper direction. And is much needed to us as a refreshing yes. for Rey Mysterio and Dominic. Yeah, because honestly, and I think I've said on this on TV, it's like I'm kind of tired of seeing Mysterio. I mean, I'm not saying he's one of the greatest luchadors of all time. He's a fantastic wrestler. He's a legend. It's like one of those things like he needs some freshening up. He's he's I've seen him for let's see. First time I ever saw him was like in WCW back in before he was in WCW when that or his AAA Lucha uh the um when Worlds Collide pay per view, which was so and then ECW. So it's been like, you know, close to I don't want to say 30 years, but over 20 years that I've been a, seeing him on TV. It's just he needs some freshening up. He's a little bit stale. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So I think that this storyline would really rejuvenate his him and his career a little bit and get some attention on Dominic. Yeah, absolutely. Show a different character side of Dominic. Yeah, and I, I think it's expected. He's just definitely going to turn heel. I thought when Dominic would gonna come in i thought he was gonna wear a mask but uh i mean not that everybody didn't know him without a mask because he's been on tv since he was a kid you know in the story but on top of that we had uh we already talked about the first the queen's match but carmella defeated Liv morgan in the queen crown uh nothing really interesting there i mean anything to say about that one it's just another match nah yeah. just yeah. another match uh this match i absolutely loved Finn Balor defeated Cesaro. This match that was a great these match. Two, these two can fucking go. Cesaro, mm-hmm. I mean, you can tell. I mean, I always talk very greatly about Cesaro. I think he's one of the, possibly he's probably the greatest wrestler in the last ten years that's never held a WWE title. Mm-hmm. Like, Not only that, like this, this was the first time ever meeting between the two as well. That I'm actually surprised about. So. Mm-hmm. I thought this was a fantastic match. I think there was there. Um, what else came out of SmackDown? If you, uh, I know they did the little bit with uh, Seth Rollins, and then they uh, talked about how he entered uh, Edge's home and stuff like that. That part didn't really. I'm kind of. I know Seth part. Rollins. I know Seth Rollins and Edge supposed to be doing a Hell in a Cell uh, soon. I don't know whether it's going to be a Crown um, Jewel or not. And um, obviously, they had a contract signing between. Uh, Bianca and Sasha and uh, Becky. Yeah. And then the continuance of Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns. The Brock and Roman, <laughs> I'm somewhat interested in because I don't know how it's necessarily going to turn out with Paul Heyman. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, that's, and I think that's what where everybody is. Like, is he going to stay with Roman or is he going to go with Brock? What are they really going to do with Paul? Because anything could really happen. You know what I mean? It's not necessary because they're te- they're teasing both. It's not nece- they're not really putting it out there, but it's like they're also putting it to where uh, Roman is uh, kind of basically forcing him to do certain things. You know what I mean? And and yeah, and and be basically the slave in a way. Well, we shall see what happens. I mean, if, if they have Paul Hammond go on Lesnar's side, I mean, that may turn Roman back to face, which they don't really don't need to do. They he's do not need a to. Red I think, hot heel. I think he's so, one of the I best mean, heels they've had. Like, yes. and the funny part about it is, when remember when they were really trying to push Roman as the biggest baby face in the company, and it just mm-hmm. wasn't working. I kept saying for a good two three years they really need to turn him heel because he. It's not working, and I think that yeah, turning absolutely. him heel, he turned and literally, they turned him heel, and it was the best thing for his career. Literally, mm-hmm. I don't think turning him baby face, and but I mean, Brock is going to be Brock is going to be Brock, whether he's baby face or a heel, he's going to be over. Exactly, the fans, the fans will either cheer or boo him, no matter what. Whether he's a baby face, they love Brock Lesnar. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So he's the vet. I mean, yeah, and I think it's. Is Brock, though, going to be the guy to defeat Roman Reigns? Who is going to be that guy? Or is this just going to be one of those matches? Is it going to end in a no finish at the pay-per-view? What's going to happen? Because I can't picture, I honestly <laughs> cannot picture Roman defeating Brock. And I, and I just don't think that they're ready to have anybody beat Roman right now. 
I think we talked about that last week. Like, who's going to beat Roman? I don't think they're ready to have anybody defeat him. But I don't think that uh, Roman could beat Brock. I, and unless, unless there's some sort of interference on the Usos. But, you know. Yeah. We shall see. I that's, mean, that's, the storyline story like is case. not predictable, so. Yeah, and that's what I like about it. That's, that's the best what thing. I like about it. Yeah, exactly, because wrestling, that's a part of the problem in the last 20 years that wrestling became too predictable. So mm-hmm. something that's not predictable, that's what really works out. You know what I mean? Yes, absolutely. Then we had AEW Dynamite this past Wednesday. Actually, wait, was there anything else from SmackDown that we needed to discuss? No, he was just playing everything. The tournament, uh, yeah. the continuous of the tournament, and the uh, Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns saga in a big triple threat match that's going to happen in Dubai. I just want to make so, sure that I don't miss anything. All right, so AEW Dynamite this week. Uh, we started off with the Elite. Can you make it Adam Cole and the Young Bucks with their good buddy, Michael Nakazawa? <laughs> They took on Brian Danielson, Christian Cage, Jurassic Express. I absolutely love this match. I thought this was a great match. I think any time you get these, 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 yeah, I mean, this would have been, yeah. I mean, you got, you know, I'm not the world's biggest Bucks fans. They kind of come off as annoying to me sometimes. Um, But they're heels, so it's supposed to be that way. But even either way, Mm. this is just a really good match, dude. It really was a great match. I thought it was fantastic. They showcased Lucas, uh, the Luchasaurus. They showcased him real well. And even Jungle Boy, he had his little shine. And, and you know, Daniel Bryan's always take that back, cut that out, whatever. I'll probably get sued again. Brian, <laughs> Brian Danielson. Brian Danielson continues to show that his love for wrestling and the different things that he was doing when he wasn't in WWE, which we've seen before. He signed with WWE. Right. So, uh, you know, that, and then Kenny Omega. I like Kenny Omega. I mean, I like him a lot. Yeah. Rolling around in his bed, but uh, I love Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega is no, great. I think Kenny And Adam great. Cole as well. Adam Cole as well. So I can't wait for that match to happen. Adam Cole versus Kenny Omega. I want to tell you something right now. The one thing is, like, I like Adam Cole a lot. I think he's a great wrestler. The one thing that irks me. Is when the uh, he's got him whatever opponent this match I believe forgot who it was he's got him in like the camel clutch or whatever, and the Bucks run back and forth on the ropes like they're about to kick him or whatever, but then they kiss mm-hmm. Adam Cole. Literally, I clipped that and put it to my TikTok. I got a lot of hate for that, by the way, because I Did said this, I got a lot of hate. I said this is I was like and I even said I love AEW, but this sed- segment right here. Is cringeworthy. I got so much hate saying. But the first thing is like, oh, you obviously never watched him in uh, Ring of Honor. Yes, I watched him. It doesn't make the segment any less stupid. Yeah. <laughs> or cringeworthy. Yeah. You know what I mean? I watched Yeah, you get those guys. fans. And so it just turned into, I got so much hate on that. But there was actually a lot of people that did agree with me, but I, I caught a lot of hate. <laughs> so. I mean, I, I I get it. I get how you feel. I mean, I, it doesn't bother me. I feel like it's a big ass hill uh, maneuver. It's not even a maneuver, but it's a big ass hill thing where it pisses that fan off, which it pisses you well, off. I think which that's is really great. what it's. I think that's really what it's supposed to do. That's exactly what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to piss mm-hmm. everybody off. But the thing with that is, it's like, I don't like to watch wrestling. I like to watch wrestling. You know, there's and I'm. Obviously, I, I was pretty much Markish when we talked about Roman one day and his title reign, and you know, and I was like, I had to check, basically, calm down and be like, maybe I'm thinking too deep into this. Yeah, pressure went up. Yeah, right. But it's like I like to watch wrestling. I do like to watch it and consider it a sport. So it's like when stupidity comes in, sometimes I kind of get irritated away. But mm-hmm. I also that's when I have I to check myself. That's well, yeah. I, I thank you, but one of the things is. I have to check myself and say there's it's also a show, a theatrics mm-hmm. in, as a way. And then basically they're trying to get a reaction out of the fan. I'm just a fan. So they're getting a reaction of some sort. You know what I mean? Since I don't necessarily agree with it. I've always treated it and always liked my wrestling on the more serious side and the less comedic and goofy side. I've always liked it yeah. serious. 
So, and that's probably why at this modern time period, they actually geared towards New Japan a lot. You know what I mean? It's like mm-hmm. the Japanese style because they treat it like it's a legitimate sport at time for the most part. So, anyways, I got a lot of hate for that. And I thought it was kind of funny in a way. And it's like I, after about the first three or four or 20 messages, I just stopped responding to people. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I, I try not to get my blood pressure. And I just have to remember, hey, it's just a show. And that's it. That's it. That's it. Now, uh, we talked about these two last week. Sammy Guevara defeated Bobby Fish. This match was pretty freaking amazing, I tell you. Yes. I thought this was great. Yes. After this match, Bobby Fish, the announced, has actually signed with AEW. So anything we said last week doesn't count. He signed with AEW. Yeah. Scrap that. He signed Scrap with that. AEW. <laughs> but I think it's going to be a great uh, addition to the AEW roster. I think he proved that, hey, Listen, he still got it, man. I mean, not that mm. I ever really doubted Bobby Fish, but um, I think that him signing with AEW is a good addition to the roster. Absolutely. And then, you know, yeah, I congratulate him because at his age right now, he still could go with the young guys. He's not that old, dude. He's one year younger than me. I know I'm great for my age, but seriously. I right, see. Yeah, you should you should rethink what you just said. Yeah, wait. <laughs> I've been great since I've been 16. By the way, um, hey. <laughs> <laughs> on top of that, uh, Darby Allen and Sting, Darby Allen with Sting, excuse me, defeated Nick Camarado. This match was really nothing to talk about. Uh, Nick Camarado out of Sting on TV. Yeah, just yeah. Get Sting, uh, Darby uh, Allen on TV. Darby Allen won. Uh, this match, Hikara Shida and Serena Deeb. They said if uh, Shida wins, it's going to be her fiftieth win on t- uh, win. So they're about to present her with um, a trophy for it. I and love I, the segment, by the way. I thought it was great. It was a really good segment. I think Shida's really because not fantastic. everybody could get their fifty wins. They did not right. everybody. They did Jungle Boy, which was fine. But now this time, it's not guaranteed that you're going to get this fiftieth win. Right. So, but they, the thing about that is they actually pres- had the trophy printed up and stuff before. Yes. I get it. It's professional wrestling. It's part of the show. So they're going to get this stuff ready to go, etc. Only to have her lose and Serena Deeb just trash the the whole entire trophy. Is it a trophy or a plaque or whatever the fuck it's, it's called? Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, I thought this was a really good segment. I thought it was great. I like Serena Deeb. I think she's pretty talented. Yeah, so you know, Serena D, we remember her from WWE when she was with the uh, with CM Punk and his faction. And you was know, that the um, Straight Edge Society? Was that what they Straight were Edge Society? Yep. All right. So with uh, um, with Gallows and Joey Matthews, and Oof. um, yeah, you know, I remember her from then and all the way from then to now. She she's great, like. Mm-hmm. I enjoy her work. She show her veteran status with these ladies. And um, I'm glad she won the match and she did what she did at the end of the match. So that yeah. was a great. It uh, was actually. Not everybody could get their 50 wins, which is great. Yeah. And I thought it was really good. Like it was. Um, it was one of those other segments that basically is unpredictable as, as to how it was going to come out. Mm-hmm. You know, because you kind of like I thought it was like oh, she does. She's going to win. But it didn't end up that way. It's cool. Yeah. They said. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> so had, yeah, right. So the casino ladder match something or other. Um basically the winner gets a title shot of Kenny Omega. Mm-hmm. John Moxley, Pac, Andrade, Orange Cassidy, Lance Archer, Matt Hardy. I think Matt Hardy was just kind of thrown in there, scene. Am I wrong? Yeah. yeah. He just didn't seem he seemed like the oddball. He was so the oddball. Poor, so this was a really good match, and then the Joker ends up being Hangman Page. Hangman Adam Page, which was uh, really, which, the, which made sense. It did absolutely make sense. I was just like, oh, it's got to be Hangman. But a lot of people are like, oh, I wonder if it's going to be Bray Wyatt. I'm like, what? I was like, no. I, was nah. like, uh, I think a lot of people this- were just really confused as to who it actually could be. But a lot of people, I think, were gearing towards uh, Hangman. So. Absolutely. It, it was... It, it was the story was there. He had exactly. the tag match where he lost and he can't get a title shot. So the only title shot that he can get was that. Right. 
And I look forward to this match happening because I think Hangman, Hangman's actually, um, do you remember when AEW held their, what was it their first pay-per-view? Not their first pay-per-view, but um, Second. when he held the, when he, when he fought Jericho for the title. All out, he, the first all out. Yeah, but he won, he won a battle royal prior to that, I think on the previous show, right? To get to that yes, match. Yes, he did. Uh, double or nothing. Okay, thank you. You have a better memory than I do. I thought I had a, <laughs> a good memory. I just, I just have problem remembering which events and how events sometimes happen. Sometimes I got to look it up. But either way, I said, I thought right then and there that they're going to just make this guy a star. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And and I thought it was there. I said, I, and once I started watching more pages, I said, this guy's great. You know what I mean? It's, mm-hmm. it's it, he's going to be the one. And lo and behold, it was Jericho that ended up taking the title. But I really which didn't think sense. that. It did, but at the same time, I was like, now nah. I was like, AEW, at the time, I was like, it seems like a different company. They're not going to just put on some former WWE guy. But as I've been watching the AEW, I said, it, it does make sense because putting on an established star, you get what I'm saying there, you know, and, and putting on somebody that's established and have everybody, all the young kids vying for it, basically, yeah. which eventually ended up happening. So, but now at this time, it's been two years. Adam Page has been on TV longer, and I said, now he's the star that. And he's way more popular than he was when he faced Jericho. Yes. So I think that there's a very good chance. I mean, it might not be a title change against Omega, but I think it'll be a hell of a freaking match when they do meet. No, absolutely. And I think he's next in line to grab that strap you along think- with Jericho, Moxley, and Kenny Omega. I think he's next in line. Hmm. You think he might have a chance of actually being the champion? Like absolutely. that? Wow. I'll, I'll call, call it right now. I'm going to. I'm Wow. Because I'm sitting here like, who's going to be the guy to take on, take the title from Omega? It's kind of unpredictable to me. But I mean, I guess if I'd have to choose somebody, it'd be Hangman. Because, I mean, I don't really see anybody else in that picture that uh, is able to take that title right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. He's, he's next in line. And, you know, hopefully MJF get his shot. Darby Allen as well. You know, all these guys are future stars of the company. And Adam Page is probably going to be the start of it. I really thought that at some point that MJF is going to get that belt. That's my opinion. Um, He'd be the great person to take it off Adam Page, truthfully, if if Adam Page gets it. If they want to go that route. He's the greatest heel in the freaking business right now. I've been saying that mm-hmm. for the last like couple years now. And some people don't see it. I think he's kind of crazy sometimes, but there's, you know. Um but I think he really he gets it. He's he he plays like that in person when he's around fans. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Not necessarily. He does not. Uh, he doesn't. He's not out of characters. So I think that I like it. I like it. It's old school. On to AWA. Oh, AWA. Jesus, what's wrong with me? AEW. AWA. <laughs> AEW. He's making a return. I'm like got my AWA belt behind me. Um, <laughs> my AEW Rampage. This I Can we was... talk about this instant classic of CM Punk versus Daniel Garcia? That was a great freaking match, right? Yes. That was a good, like, it was a really great freaking match. Now, my thing is, like, can Punk, since he's returned, not decide between the long tights and the trunks? He came in with the long tights. I, then he the trunks to... I don't know where he packed the <laughs> wrong thing in the gear bag. I don't know. <laughs> right, listen. Sometime as a performer, you forget what you're going to pack. You don't know what color you're going to pack or whatever. Maybe that's happening. To me, I like him in long tights. It enhances his style. It showed that he actually uh, wanted to change his style from what he was in the WWE. So I like the long pants. And Chris Jericho mentioned it actually on commentary and Rampage, which was funny as well. But I like the long pants. Some people have been sitting there saying where the... Uh, these small trunks, which I don't understand what's the difference anyway. He's just wrestling. So, I, right. Don't he's wrestling. Well, I can care less. He's freshening up himself. And that's. Yes. So, you know, he's he come out. Great he's tanned. Like, I don't get what's going on here. It's seven years later. He's a different CM Punk. He's a more mature. Obviously, you can see that in his promos and his him as a person as a human being as an as an adult he's a different person 
You know what I mean? Yes. He might have been a little bit more arrogant back in the day, but he spent seven years away from the people. You know what I mean? I yes. guess he wasn't. He might have been humble or humbled, become humble in the last seven years, I guess, so to speak. Because I've always noted, I've always heard rather that he wasn't always the most pleasant of human beings. But I've heard, you know, it just seems like he's a really cool dude now. Like he's real chill. Yeah. He seems like he respects. He's more his humbled right now. And the fans, like you know, he realizes that these fans missed him as much as they did. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That they wanted him here. And I think that the whole thing is like he's freshened up his whole entire – he's freshened up the CM Punk persona. You know what I mean? And a yes, long time yes. definitely, definitely a big part of that, I think. And I, when he first showed up in the long tights, I'm like, what the hell is going on? I was like, this is weird. But mm-hmm. I grew – it took me a little bit to grow accustomed to him. I, th- I like the way they're designed with this kind of like his personalized insignia type uh, – look to him you know what i mean with the the stars and the, and the and the straight edge stuff so yeah either way i don't mind the long Time tight all wounds. <laughs> what's Time that all wounds, Time yes all wounds, yes so, you know yeah well, i mean him he's, and his life yeah. very humble now and um i think that this was just a fantastic match this daniel garcia good. kid he's good you know? yes at the age of 23 yeah that young age Yes. Outside of that, we had what do we have? An AT, uh, uh, AEW Tag Team Championship match: the uh, Lucha Brothers versus the Acclaimed. I love the Lucha Brothers. I'm not necessarily a fan of the Acclaimed. Uh, well, it's not that I'm not a fan. It's just they're all right. Um, I thought this was a pretty decent match, man. This was, uh, you know, anytime you get the Lucha Brothers driving or flying all over the place, uh, especially Phoenix. You know, that guy's insane. I swear to God, that guy's not going to make the make it to forty doing the stuff he's yes. doing. <laughs> yeah, so the whole wrestling, so the whole wrestling generation at these this day and rate. But you know, hopefully yeah. that don't that hopefully that don't happen. But yeah, I'll bring up a point after uh, about the Impact show I watched last night. Uh, speaking about that dangerous wrestling uh, generation, um, Jade Carhill defeated Sky Blue. This is a match that really just was filler for the television show. It seemed Absolutely. it was over very quickly. Um, didn't really matter. Sky Blue, it seems like they were trying to build her up quite a bit in AEW just to have this match being very short. I don't know. Mm-hmm. If, you know, so I don't know. That's their format. That's what they usually do to make the match serious in between yeah. Grant Page. Okay. They just build in Jay Cargo anyway. So they build in Jay Cargo they, for I don't know what. I don't know whether it's for the what we didn't announce yet is the TBS Women's right. Championship. I was gonna say I forgot about that. They announced in between the first two matches the damn TBS title. A lot of people are throwing some hate on it. I think it's kind of ridiculous in myself, but at the same yeah. time, every not every company, but the WWE, WCW had a television title for decades, or whatever yes. the NWA or whatever. I always liked the television title. Um, it could have been designed a little bit different, but what do you think of this? this is going to be a secondary woman's title? What, what what's your opinion on this? Um, it makes sense to do that instead of doing a uh, women's tag team championship. You know, you can always have a mid card championship to make the women's the women's di- division stand out and give other women opportunity for a mid card championship instead of wrestling for one championship. Right. Yeah, I mean they're 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 just a company that's signing every great talent, so not everybody's going to get that shot. You know what I mean? So exactly. having, a sec- having a secondary title would, I guess, essentially make sense for um for the company. Now it's a matter I feel of, that's more better than having a tag team championship under the ladies because it's not it's unless you got a fully stacked women's roster that you could make as tag team wrestlers, which is most of the women wrestlers really just want to be single stars. So yeah. basically you might as well just have to make our title where it's building up the next woman to the bigger title. Even though right. that title, the TBS championship, is bigger than the the uh AEW women's championship. All right. Yeah, yeah. I think that it's going to be um, a while before they decide to add a tag team, t- a woman's tag team title with AEW. I mean, I prefer them not to, but yeah, I think it'd be a while. Yeah, I just I, with the rate they're going though, with signing 
so many people. I think it's just one of those things that's going to eventually happen. And I, I mean, probably later in the year, next year. I mean, but I just think it's one of those things that's inevitable. Just like I think that eventually there's going to be some sort of uh, another men's title at some point being added to. I mean, it's Absolutely. anything, you know, something that's more exclusive. To, I mean, I'm surprised they haven't done the AEW Dark title or something that's you know it's like those shoes <laughs> something to that effect but either way don't give no ideals please i know i know um or the youtube championship there you go let's go back mm. between elevation and dark <laughs> uh we had um let's see the ftw title ricky starks uh, defeated brian cage uh this was another really 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 good match i thought yeah uh, I think Ricky Starks, I think, is phenomenal. Same with Brian Cage. The funny thing about it is Brian Cage has been coming out lately saying that he hasn't been used enough on the EW TV, and then, bam, here he is on main eventing Rampage, and it's, what, third or yeah, fourth week? Fifth week? Fifth exactly. week? Exactly. And then, and then now, yeah, he need to understand, too, like, not everybody's going to get that chance, you know? I, I mean... One thing is, like, he was featured pretty regularly until they started signing a lot more people, you know what I mean, when he first came in. <clears throat> and then he just seemed to, once he broke away from Taz's guys, he just seemed to get lost in the shuffle, so to speak. Yeah, He would be absolutely. featured on, like, Dark, but I'm like, you know, so I'm glad to see him on the regular cable shows. But um, I think he's a phenomenal talent. I would That's another guy I wouldn't mind seeing the AEW title on eventually, but it's yeah. got to be. It's got to be done right, you know what I mean. It's got to be. He's got to be built up properly because I think it, it's it, it's there. You know what I mean. Like he looks like a big, like he could be a big star. You know what I mean, uh, a mainstream star, so to speak. But I don't know if that would transition well in AEW. As if, like you know, he was the Impact champion, but he only as compared to Impact, months. yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. So like Impact, who they put the title on, they put it on. I hate to say anybody, but they really do put it on just about anybody, especially if you're a former WWE talent or something. Exactly. You know, they'll just they put man put, or woman. Talk about that another time. Our thoughts on intergender wrestling. So I'm not a fan. I'm not. I don't think I've ever asked your opinion on that. Yeah, you did behind the scenes, yeah. but uh, oh, okay. we could talk about that another time. Yeah, I, like I said, I, I just don't want to see that happening. Uh, on mainstream TV. Anyways, uh, <laughs> do you have anything else you want to discuss? That's pretty much our weekend wrestling program. Nah, man, just from you, I did covered th- everything from current news to, uh, but uh, we also need to pay our respect to Reggie Parks, Correct. one of the belt designers that designed the Eagle WWE Championship, all the IC Championships, the the uh, retro WWF Tag Team Championships that the Bulldogs wore, the Hart Foundation, all the way up to the Dugleys and the Hardys. Um, even designed uh, WCW championships like the U.S. Championship. Yeah. Uh, rest in peace to my guy, Reggie Parks. True yes, legend. True legend, exactly. Former wrestler and uh, belt designer. Who's de- belt? He's designed every iconic belt in the industry for the last like. 40 years so mm-hmm. uh recently passed even the ufc result. championships he designed yes. some ufc championships as well i i was unaware of that until just this last past week that uh when, when i found out that he had designed some ufc belts um yeah legend in professional wrestling for designing some of the most legendary belts and his name was everywhere you know what i mean a lot of people knew that uh 87 years old yes so, god bless him Rest in peace. All right, so we're going to wrap it up. Uh, as always, Marcel, thank you very much for coming on and talking the week of professional wrestling. We're about to start another week, so Sunday we're going to have another big headache of WWE programming and uh, <laughs> trying to sit through that. Maybe we'll actually, you know, this week I did not uh, participate in the NXT 2.0, but maybe. I didn't either. Don't yeah, be ashamed. Get to the, yeah, no. Nah. So it, it's just more difficult to sit through. I mean, I think it's right now. It's even harder to sit through some Herb Abrams UWF. I mean, it's probably that's <laughs> pro- that's probably that's probably easier to watch at this point. Um, so I'm gonna wrap it up. Uh, basically, check it out on social media, the Rick Del Santo PWZ podcast. You got questions or any of that other fun stuff? You want to yell at us a little bit about what the hell we said? PWZ podcast at gmail.com. Marcel. What do you got? 
Hey, all social media, Instagram, Twitter, at Showtime Marcel. Uh, I am also on TikTok, at Showtime Marcel, number one, as in the number one. And also check me out on Facebook, Marcel Williams. Hit me up with some Q&As if you want. Send me a message. But always return back here to PWZ Podcast every week. And we give you the weekend review. And we're going to give you some more PAPW news because next week we're going to be doing a review of Elm City Showdown. It's going to be a big show. So, folks, check it out. And we'll see you next week. Be well, be safe. Good night.